What is pitch? Pitch is subjective. It varies from person to person, ear to ear. Some individuals have perfect pitch, which allows them to locate individual notes. That was a standard tuning G sharp at 420 hertz. Now here's a higher pitch. That was a standard tuning E at 666 hertz. Some people are tone deaf and experience pitch differently. Rather than tones, some people's brains may interpret music and sounds as just noise. Now what is frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles or oscillations a vibration of air makes per second. Frequency is also known as hertz, because when there's too many hertz, it can hurt your ears. Thank you everyone, I will be here all night. Pitch is the fundamental root of all melodic music, since cavemen were picking up bones, drilling holes in them, and blowing on them. Only most recently has a music pitch standard been implemented in western music so that all modern orchestras will remain in tune with each other. This standard is known as concert pitch and places the note A at 440 hertz. However, this standard was implemented by the Nazis in World War II and was created to brainwash the masses to become stupid, selfish, evil people and is the root of all the world's problems. However, there is hope. If you tune concert pitch just 8 hertz lower with an A at 432 hertz, you get the divine magic universe life frequency which heals the world and puts everyone's brains together and literally gives you superpowers because that frequency literally follows the Fibonacci sequence, the human heart rate, the brain when you're sleeping and dreaming about cool things, computer binary code, reflects the speed of light, vibrates the same as water molecules, pyramids. Also when you throw a bunch of sound on a vibrating metal plate, it looks like at least four times cooler than that fake ass 440 hertz. You're probably wondering, hey, hey Frank, why hasn't anyone decided to be like, hey fuck you Hitler, I'm gonna tune my instruments down 1.818% to save the world. Maybe because of the Illuminati. Maybe because we're all dumb. Or maybe because literally everything is made up and pitch frequency is subjective and none of that stuff really matters in the first place. Now if you go on YouTube and you search 440Hz versus 432Hz, you're just gonna get a lot of shitty videos of like people like just putting a tone and being like, which one's better? Which one's different? Blah blah blah. But no one really gets in deep like what this actually is. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what all this stuff really is. I mean, I wish I had a metal plate that I can throw sound on and play frequencies on and just look at that. But like, um, to really understand pitch, we gotta go back to the beginning. That, that's too far back to the beginning. Um, let's fast forward a little bit, this is so embarrassing. I was trying to make like this like whole metaphorical point about like, you know, cell division and It all starts off in the far off vaporwave time of the 500 BCs, when this dude named Pythagoras Theorem really liked triangles. He also really liked ratios and numbers, and discovered that music and numbers had something to do with each other. Pythagoras had a lot of followers, and they learned that the ratio 2 to 1 in music creates the octave. Meaning, an A at 220 hertz doubled is an A at 440 hertz, and it sounds like this. The correlation between various musical tones and ratios is known as harmonics. So the cult of Pythagoras began messing around with various ratios and created an early tuning scale following the ratio 3-2, or in music terms, the perfect fifth. It sounds kind of like this. This tuning was known as Pythagoras tuning, cause what else was he supposed to name these things, nothing else had been invented yet. Disney also made this really cute vintage 1950s animation where Donald Duck learns about the Fibonacci sequence in uh, Donald in Math Magic Land. It also shows how music started off as a secret occult ritual where Pythagoras and his friends all painted pentagrams on their hands and they used the ratios to have like giant jam sessions. It was all very metal. Then a bunch of stuff that nobody cares about happened, like religion, burning of the pre-internet, internet, Alexandria, dark ages, there's no correlation between any of that whatsoever. And then the whole renaissance thing happened when people were like, hey, instead of just saying everything is magic, let's find out what the fuck this magic really is by using numbers. 
This French dude named Marin Marseni wrote this book called Le Harmonie Universelle, or The Harmony of the Universe, in 1637. In this book, Marin created Marseni's Law, named after himself because literally no one else had invented it yet. Galileo tried to do it first, but he couldn't prove it, and then Marseni found uh, th these following rules, and then he wrote them down. Long string equals longer pitch. Short string equals higher pitch. Less tension equals lower pitch. More tension equals higher pitch. Thick string equals thick pitch. Skinny string equals skinny pitch. He also found out how to calculate fundamental frequency using this equation. Frequency equals 1 divided by 2 times the length of the string times the square root of force divided by the mass of the string. He calculated this by creating this contraption to accurately measure string vibrations with a weighted cube. His discoveries literally helped create the piano and the violin. These laws were scientific rules in order to find the number of oscillations of a stretched string, or the frequency of a string. In 1711, the tuning fork was invented by British trumpeter John Shore. The tuning fork revolutionized pitch standards as it was the first invention to emit a pure tone which is used in tuning instruments. A pure tone means it's like a perfect sign, and like, that was when humans invented a thing that made a perfect sign. Then in 1713, another French dude named uh, Joseph Savior suggested a uh, scientific pitch which defined all C's as powers of 2, making C4 256 hertz and C5 512 hertz and so on, following that whole computer thing of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. In scientific pitch, an A4 would be roughly 430 hertz. Coincidentally enough, the first ever tuning fork John Shore gave to German Baroque composer Handel was a C at 512 Hz following the scientific tuning. During the 18th century, pitch varied from composer to composer and city to city. Oddly enough, pitch is also affected by region due to temperature. Colder climates makes pitch sharper and higher, while warmer climates make pitch flatter and lower. So the warmer the climate, the more likely composers would have a lower A4 pitch than colder climates. Then in 1815, all the kings and queens of Europe met up at the Congress of Vienna to discuss European peace after Napoleon got all crazy on everyone. Tsar Alexander I of Russia was all like, Hey, in Russia, uh, everything's cold. Make the orchestra sound brighter. And then all the other kings and queens were like, Yeah, make the music sound brighter. And since we have to listen to people with more gold than us, all the composers began shifting their pitches up to meet the expectations of their divine masters. In 1858, France was the first country to impose a standard tuning law. With the help of seven composers, two physicians, France found all of Europe tuned between 432 hertz and 456 hertz. Then in 1859, France officially decreed A4 to be 435 hertz, as it was a standard for all their music cons conservatories and music schools. Then in 1884, an Italian composer with a fancy hat named Giuseppe Verdi was all like, hey, I'm gonna standardize A at 400 132 hertz in Italy. Verdi was famously quoted as saying, what we call an A in Rome is a B flat in Paris, because Italy is lower and hotter than France, geographically. He chose 432 hertz as it was closer to scientific pitch, sometimes known as the philosopher philosophical pitch, um, and that would place C at 512 hertz. This later led to the first international meeting to discuss pitch in Vienna, again only this time in 1885 where all of Europe chose A at 435 hertz because that was a good medium. From this time to the beginning of World War II, most concert pitch was tuning A from 430 hertz to 456 hertz depending on climate and composer's mood. This is where things get kind of weird. In uh, 1925, the various American music instruments manufacturers began producing instruments with their tune being at 440 hertz. This later led to the American Standards Association to confirm that 440 hertz as the American standard in 1936. Then in 1937, the US federal government began broadcasting a 440 hertz tone over the radio. And this is where things get Nazi-ish. According to the earliest source I could find in this 1988 newspaper, Lead Nazi propaganda coordinator Dr. Joseph Goalbillows Go Go began using the American tuning of 440 hertz on Radio Berlin. Then in 1938, he and the Acoustic Committee of Radio Berlin requested that the British Standard Association organize a congress in London in order to adopt internationally the German tuning of 440 hertz. 
They did this by asking as many European countries which they preferred. If the country preferred 432 Hertz, they didn't invite them to the meeting. Then in June of 1939, they announced the new frequency of 440 Hertz as the international standard. Then literally two months later, World War II started and they all started killing each other. After the war was over, Jazz took Europe by storm and the US shipped a bunch of 440 Hertz manufactured instruments to Europe. Because of the surplus of American instruments in 1953, London summoned another congregation of music experts who favored the 440 Hz tuning and formed the International Standardization Organization and made 440 Hz the official tuning of the world. In fact, according to the Casual Opera Goer's Guide, the National Bureau of Standards broadcasts a 440 Hz tone on the radio on five different radio bands all throughout the United States and the world. So you see kids, it's not the Nazis who invented the demonic 440 frequency standard, it's actually the capitalist American instrument manufacturers in the 1920s. Now I'm not saying there's a global conspiracy to brainwash the masses, or even more terrifying, literally everyone in the world doesn't know what the fuck they're doing and everything is random chaos, but pitch frequency is subjective and varies from person to person. So so one tone is unique to each person who hears it. Personally, I tune all my acoustic instruments to 432 hertz because I like the flatness and it just feels better on my throat strings when I sing to it. The only problem I find is most DAWs are factory set to 440 hertz, so it can be kind of tricky detuning all your VSTs and drum samples to match 432 hertz. But don't worry, I'll show you how to do it since frequencies are all just math, it's just easy to lower the math to get a different math. In Audacity, all you gotta do is lower the pitch by negative 1.81 8% or negative 0.32 semitones and you turn your 440 hertz piece into a 432 hertz piece. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support my channel, check out my music on the Spotify and Bandcamp. Uh, if you're like, hey Frank, what about Eastern music? They have their own pitches and scales that they've been doing since the beginning of time. Well, I'll do that next time. So yeah, thanks for watching. Also check out my history playlist on my channel for more history.